Hey fam, Quell here, and we're rolling through my latest Vaporwave illustration, Vaporwave Elm Civi. If you're new to my work in the channel, I'm an artist in publishing and games. And this year, I'm transporting my favorite characters into a Vaporwave universe. Of course, I'm here to share the journey with you as well. So let's take a look at how this piece came together from start to finish. All right, let's take a quick glance at the brushes used for this piece. I only used three main brushes and a stamp brush. So I have my main sketch brush, which I did most of the sketching and the blocking in, a hard round for getting all of the masks done, easy, no pressure on the wrists, and a soft airbrush for blending edges and blending shadows and highlights. So when I got into this piece at first, I actually struggled a little bit with Alma Alexia's pose um, and had to bring up some references to really figure out how I wanted her torso to twist. In fact, I got frustrated to the point where I needed to just completely redo it and sort of build a mock-up pose uh, just out of a silhouette and like kind of rendering it a little bit just to kind of get a sense of the form. I always do this if I'm really having a hard time figuring out how I want to draw something. It's easier for me to see form uh, when I think of like drawing the shadows and the highlights. Sometimes line just doesn't cut it for me. So that's what I had to do for uh, Amalexia here, as you see. After I did that block in, it became really easy to see where her rib cage and everything went. Then I went to work working on So the Seal. And at first he kind of looked like a big blocky tower. And in this part, I kind of just put it together, threw it together, wanted to just get it in there, block something in. And then I started working on the deck and figuring out what I wanted to do with his hand. I really did not know until I figured out, oh, you know what? It'd be kind of cool if he had the cigar going on there. Just getting in some of the basic shapes on Amalexia for her outfit. Um, I did have an idea for her hair for a bit there. And in this part, I am going in and setting up the silhouette just to square up how I wanted to go about making sure that the composition is what I want it to be. Quick reference check there. Oh, this is where I decided that Sotha Seal's body was not to my liking. He was kind of stiff compared to the others. So I went in and did a little bit of thinking on the Daft Punk image and decided to do something more along those lines because I had a reference to work it out. And therefore made a Sotha Seal that was more dynamically posed than his previous rendition. And you gotta get the fingers in there. It was very important I got the hands right. This is the part of the piece where it was really starting to come together as to how I wanted the composition to be. Now in this phase, once I have a good understanding of you know where my shapes are gonna be, uh, what I start doing is kind of a cleaned up sketch. It defines the forms a little bit more. And I know that these lines are eventually going to be kind of erased away, but I want to define any sort of fabric folds and get the expressions down the way I want to. Um, with the faces, if you notice, I really don't do a lot of flipping of my canvas. I just decide to flip elements that I know need to be somewhat symmetrical. The thing with faces is uh, that faces are never really truly symmetrical, and if they are, they kind of are of off-putting. So I do a little bit of the facing. <laughs> I borrowed Vivek's face to sort of structure so the seal's face, but you can see it completely changed up his uh, proportions a little bit there with the eyebrows. And even though I knew that I was going to put Sotha Seal's face under a helmet, I just, for the fun of it, went in and gave him a face because 
I wasn't quite decided if I was strictly going to just do one version with the helmet or not. Here I go, blocking in the helmet. Uh, as I go in for accessories right now, I am putting them up on a new layer and just blocking out the silhouette for them rather than having them be drawn. Because when I get in there with them, I'm just going to be filling it in as a local color and keeping it alpha locked. It's very important. Alpha locking layers when I go in to do any kind of masking for the local colors is something just really important to my process. And it really helps when I get to the stage where I have to do the nitty gritty, itty bitty cleanup. Cause I know eventually I'm going to be hiding those lines. So the folks that ask me, you know, oh, you do lineless work. What great lineless work. I'm like, they're not technically lineless. <laughs> I actually really do enjoy starting with lines. Um, I just kind of treat them a little more loosely than like a comic artist would. Quick. And here again with the accessories, I am tinkering with just drawing them as a silhouette. I'm going in and I'm putting some details on some other layers. These details I keep separated on the layers until I'm ready to combine them. I think in total this piece kind of sat around 30 layers, but I also made sure to condense them. Here we go, and I, I define uh, Sotha Seal's face a little bit and they're giving them eyes so they don't have like a dead look. Okay, this part I'm going in and starting to do some ambient occlusion a little bit into setting up the key light. Uh, key light is your main light source. It is the first thing I start to tackle because once I have an established key light and all the shadows are following the same direction, it's much easier to handle other light sources such as the fill light or if there's rim light and uh, bounce light later. So this is a very important part of the process to just bang out that key light. And I started with Amalexia first. sort of while I was tackling the key light on a, no a multiply layer, as you see me flicking in between there, I started to think about where my ambient occlusion was going to be. And those ambient occlusions, so ambient occlusion is the darkest shadows um, that you will see. And often uh, we interpret lines to be ambient occlusion. Um, and you'll see as the piece progresses, I will be working some of those lines into the ambient occlusion. Gotta get those man pants done first. Just having fun uh, getting the sheen on the tie there. This was just so much fun to render. building in the planes of the helmet there. Again, keeping in mind where our light source is the whole time. And I got into Vec. Yeah, I did a little demonstration there on the alpha lock and you know how you can scribble in an alpha locked area and it won't go outside. Some people like to use clipping mask instead, which is a non-destructive way of 
the same process. I just do the alpha lock just because. I do use clipping masks when I'm working in Procreate. Because Procreate doesn't have the same cheats as Photoshop. It's getting there though. Nope, there me. Exporting works in progress for the stuff. So in here, I'm starting to work on ambient occlusion, just with some more subtle shadows though, just to define the hair a bit. I've also started putting in the bounce light on Sotha Seal's mask. Because it is a very shiny surface, it's going to pick up some of the reflection coming off of Amalexia's hair and his very bright white suit. You're going to see it on his glove as well. And so this actually wound up being the most tedious part of the painting, is just going in and detailing all of the edges and taking out any lines, making it really clean, cleaning up edges. It's a lot of edge control. Oh, there we go, putting in the fill light. So the fill light in this case, I decided to use the sky as a fill light. The sky is a really beautiful fill light and that's what makes outdoor photography really pretty because it has, it provides a very natural fill light. And in this phase, I am using my main brush to put down the pigment and I'm mostly using my airbrush to erase it away. A lot of this piece was using the main oil brush and to, to put stuff down and using the airbrush to erase it away. That's kind of my favorite thing to do. Oh, now we're working on the speculars. Specular highlights, so kind of the brightest bits in there. The temptation to put specular highlights everywhere is very strong. So as you see my image going into a black and white right there, what I'm doing is a proof setup check, and it's a setting in Photoshop where you can turn it to 20% uh, gray dot gain. And the reason why I do that is to check my values. It is so important to check values throughout a big painting to know where your eyes are gonna go. Value is perhaps the most important fundamental in any kind of painting. It will really, make or break a piece, uh, in, in my opinion. Oh, here we go, specular highlights. Okay, I lied, I used a fifth brush and it was my shiny star brush from my <laughs> Vaporwave kit. I don't know, I don't count those effect brushes as like brushes, but because I only use them for one thing. And he here's the eternal struggle with me trying to figure out what color do I want to make the Vaporwave moons, the Joan and Jode. I was like, oh, I could do palm trees, nah. So again, I was blocking in between the proof setup to make sure I had the right thing. God, I spent so much time trying to figure this out. <laughs> Eventually I got it right. Darkened up the sky a bit and went into the final proof setup to double check my values and boom. Got that nice spotlight going. Got a little bit of bounce light in the bottom, just for fun. And voila! This video, my learning tutorials, my live lessons, and all the other goodies that dive into my process are entirely made possible by Patreon supporters and rad people like you.